Welcome to ESC 418A Lecture 6C, References and Avoiding Plagiarism. As I mentioned on the blog site, this will be a fairly quick overview of referencing. Referencing can become extremely detailed, but I'll leave the details of all of the different styles and some of the nuances around referencing to the more detailed sites that I've linked to. So there are two things that I want to cover with regards to referencing. One is generally what should be referenced, and two, what are the different styles available. So in avoiding plagiarism, we need to refer to any original source material that we use that is not directly related to the study at hand. So in other words, even if we've done previous research ourselves, we still need to refer to that previous research. If we've used any data, information, facts, knowledge, methods, or anything else that was derived through some other study, we need to refer to that study. There are a few different types of information that we'll refer to. So the first and the easiest is quoted text. If we copy a line of text, a sentence or two, from another author, that's fine as long as we put it in quotation marks and we provide a reference. Now, in most academic writing, that is minimized. In fact, most journal papers would have at most one or two quoted references, and usually none at all. As you become a better writer, you'll be able to summarize and paraphrase other writers more effectively and easily, and you can just simply refer to their study and give the general idea or concept of what they found rather than quoting them directly. If we've used any data or facts, those are fairly easy. We can simply cite what that fact or data point or set of data points is and refer to that author. So anything that we've gathered from another source that is not common knowledge, in other words, it could be subject to dispute. If there is some fact that we need to show our source, somebody can challenge us on whether or not it is truly true. And if indeed somebody else has gathered that information and we're simply just using that information, which is totally fine, we just need to provide a reference to it. Some things that you should avoid as, as a general rule, any sort of wholesale copying of large blocks of text or data or figures or anything like that. Usually figures are copyrighted, so that's not even plagiarism. That's just simply copyright uh, infringement. But any sort of large blocks of text that we would copy and try and present as our own work, that's clearly plagiarism. And essentially it's... Uh, actually possible to get kicked out of university for that. But more importantly, if you're in an academic or sorry, a, a professional career or an academic career after you finish university, you could lose your professional accreditation and you're breaking codes of ethics. So you really need to avoid any sort of copying of other people's work, whether intentional or accidental. And I have been, you know, marking papers from people and I could see that it was sort of, sort of unintentional copying. There's 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 definitely different gradients of copying. Uh, but even that is is very risky territory. So you have to be very careful. If you've copied any text from anybody, it needs to be put into quotation marks. But far better yet is simply summarize, read something, set it aside, don't look at the original text as you're summarizing what you are saying about that information. So in other words, you don't hold a piece of paper in your hand and keep looking at it as you're typing your paper. You read through, you think back to yourself, now what did that paper say? In my own words, I'll re-summarize that and cite it. So I've linked to Shoja. Actually, I haven't linked to Shoja. Shoja is one of the documents that I've provided a reference to in our notes, and you can download it for free from the library. And so I've listed chapter 19 from that document as a good source. So from that source, I've actually taken this text and you can see it's in quotes. It's a fairly large amount of text to put in quotes, but interestingly, the Shoja text had actually taken it from a previous source. It's a very good list, so I thought I would show it as written. So these are some things that must be acknowledged or cited in an academic paper. So the original source of ideas, text, or illustrations must always be acknowledged. So if it's somebody else's original information or data, that must be acknowledged. 
If the text is taken verbatim, it must be enclosed within quotation marks. So that's what I've done here. Normally we would only do that with a sentence or two, but that just shows that we're not paraphrasing. We're not putting it in our own words. We're simply quoting that author. And a lot of times another author will have said something as well as it possibly can be said. And if we try and just rephrase it, it becomes awkward and it looks like poorly worded text. So sometimes it's really just best to quote another author. An idea that has been reinterpreted by the author or a text that has been paraphrased should still recognize the original source. So in fact, that's what I've done here. You can see that I've cited Chao Han et al. 2013. That's the original source. And I've said that is as cited by Masik chapter 19 in Shoja. So Shoja is the document where I got this text from. And if you go in Shoja chapter 19, you'll see that they cite Chao Han et al. 2013. So if a piece of text is taken from one's own previous work, it must be clearly indicated. And so that's easy enough. You just cite your own previous work. Written permission is required to use previously published drafts, data, images, etc. So any images, uh, whole data sets, you would need to contact the copyright owner or the original author and ask them. And often in academic settings, if you are looking to expand upon an author's previous work and you ask them for their data set, often they're quite happy to send it to you provided you're giving them proper attribution and you're keeping them informed about the research. And that's just part of collaboration. The final point I'll just let you read. If you find that you've accidentally plagiarized, get a hold of the copyright owner or the journal or whoever owns it immediately. So there are lots of different styles. We went over some of these when we used our reference manager software and because everything related to these styles is stored in the software it's nice you don't have to memorize any particular details of what these styles look like just know that they exist these are some of the most common ones and you may recall from tutorial there are at least a thousand different styles so those are journal specific styles but all of them follow one of two general formats if you work as a consultant or have clients or in a government organization, often there will be a specific referencing style that you'll need to use there. So this is one of the two main types. So this in this type of referencing, you can see in the text I wrote on the previous slide, I showed a list from Shoja. And then I cited Shoja in the IEEE -E -E style or IEEE style with the one. So if, now if you look down into the reference list, all the references will be cited in the order that I cite them, followed, uh, following the number of the citation. And you can see I've also quoted my friend Devin and his nice papers on modeling. And those are papers number two and three in the reference list. And so this is the IEEE style. The next style is the Chicago. This has the author and the year written in line with the text. And so you can see in the first line, Choja et al. 2020, a bit like modeling. I should probably have a space. Sorry about that. Cast and Dyke 2015, Cast and Dyke 2015. And now the difference here is that in the reference section, Cast and Dyke is listed first because even though it comes second chronologically in the paper, alphabetically it comes first. So it's just a different style of writing it and nice uh, software like we showed in the tutorial will actually organize those for you. So it's, it's a beautiful thing. It saves a lot of time. So that was it. As I mentioned on the blog site, depending on how much of this you already know, and depending on how many of the details you need to still learn, go and have a look at the, the list of documents that I've linked to and dig into those a little bit until you really understand how to properly reference documents and understand a little bit more about the styles. But again, you don't have to memorize what any of the styles look like or any of the details of the formats. So that is it for lecture six. Have a great week and we'll see you next week.